Hey guys, this is Trent. Just upon using this N97 as my main phone for close to two weeks, there has been a lot that I have discovered, positive and negative, about this handset. Now, the first thing that pops out to your eye when looking at the front face of the N97 is the illuminated menu key, which is the notification light. Now, whenever the N97 is in standby mode and there is no incoming message, you basically have one steady flash that happens slowly. Whenever the N97 receives a new notification, the notification light basically flashes two times in a row instead of flashing just once for the breathing light. Whenever you're charging the N97, you can see that there is an indicator light next to the charging port that glows white. The light continues to shine as long as the charging is taking place. When the charging is finally finished, the light will eventually shut off. This device also has a built-in accelerometer, which also allows it to be able to have the flip silent feature where you can basically turn the phone over onto its face to silence an incoming call. There you have it, the flip silent feature for the N97. Now, whenever the N97 is locked in standby mode, there are two ways to unlock it. One, you can use the lock switch on the side here, or you can simply open up the QWERTY keypad. And doing either one of these things will cause the backlight to come on so that you can use the interface reliably. I will now use the lock switch. There you go. The built-in accelerometer also allows you to be able to switch the orientation of the phone depending on the position it's being held in. There are built-in transition effects that are available for your theme on the N97. With the theme effects activated, switching the home screen into private mode basically happens in the same fashion like it, as if it was an iPhone. With my fingernail, I basically do a horizontal swipe across the screen to show the activation of the private mode for my home screen. With the theme effects activated, as you can see, there is a white glare that takes over the icon once it's selected. As you can see, without the theme effects activated, things basically happen without any sort of transitioning effect whatsoever. To select an icon, there is no visual special effect whatsoever. You're just basically selecting the icon, it's highlighted, and that's basically One it. One thing that I have liked about the N97 so far is the ability for customization of the home screen via the widgets. Now being that I was a fan of the E71, I have always been used to the active desktop feature of the home screen. What the widgets do for the N97 is it takes the active desktop and it takes it to a whole nother level. Not only do you have the email and the calendar features updated on your home screen, you also have the ability to have access to different online resources such as Amazon, Facebook, AccuWeather, and so on. You have your carrier data up at the upper left-hand corner. You have the battery life indicator along with a number of different symbols that represent different connections or different alerts that are enabled on your phone. Now tapping on these symbols in the upper right-hand corner gives you a quick drop-down of what's going on with your phone. Whether you have a new voicemail message, you have Bluetooth activated, or whether you're connected to a Wi-Fi. At the top of this drop-down menu, you also have a quick link that takes you to the connectivity menu that shows you all of your available settings within the connectivity folder. You have your date, your profile block, as well as the time block over to the left. 
tapping on to the date block automatically opens up and takes you to the calendar. Tapping on the profile widget allows me to switch my profile to whatever happens to be appropriate at any particular point in time. Whether I want to do silent, you'll see there that the phone is now activated into silent mode. Now another thing that you'll notice from the theme effects is that when they're on, the alert basically slides up and slides back down very quickly, whereas if the theme effects were off, it would just simply pop up at the screen and then quickly disappear. I also have shortcuts enabled for different applications to the phone. Now the first one here is, an, is a shortcut for a new text message. The second one is a shortcut to the web browser. The third one is for active notes. And the fourth one is to the calculator. I have my widget for my Gmail mailbox. I have had some difficulties. Whenever I have a new email, it basically plays an alert, just like you heard, and it also shows um, the first two new messages that are available. I have my Facebook widget, which basically keeps tabs on my Facebook account from online. Um, as you guys already know, in addition to the email widget, the Facebook widget also maintains a regular connection to the internet in order to provide up-to-date information. There's two ways to view it. You have the view that shows my current status update along with incoming messages, incoming pokes, and new friend requests that happen to come in. The alternate version is to show the first three available status reports of other friends that I happen to be with on Facebook. The next feature underneath the Facebook widget happens to be favorite contacts. These are basically quick access shortcuts to those people you most likely would be in touch with. The music library widget. This allows me to basically control any sort of music that is being played on the phone from my home screen. We are now on the main page of the music player and I'm going to access my library of 2,459 songs. Like with any other Nokia music player, you can access your library through artists, albums, playlists, all songs individually, the podcasts, genres, and composers. In order to select one of these features, in the music library, as you can see, it would require a double tap and not a one tap because doing a one tap only highlights the feature and doesn't open it up. And this same kind of double tap command also goes for selecting a song. Now being able to tap only once to highlight a song can be seen as a safeguard to prevent from playing the wrong song off the bat. Now you can also switch the orientation to horizontal mode in which you can then use the D-pad using the, the stylus or my fingernail doesn't always prove to be an accurate experience so I'm kinda glad that having the D-pad to select the song individually is possible okay The now playing screen of the S60 music player doesn't really deviate much from any other Nokia device like the E71 or the E75 for that matter. The great thing about having this big huge screen for the N97 is that it provides a big display to show all of your information in this almost in the same manner as the iPhone or the iPod Touch. Album art, it is prominently displayed here toward the middle of the screen and below the album art you've got a progress bar that shows the song as it's playing and then below the progress bar you have the name of the song as well as the name of the artist you have fast forward or skip forward rewind or skip back as well as the play pause button in the center then you also have the command for back that takes you to the other menus of the music library now and you also have the options menu that shows the different features available from the music player. I'll give you guys a taste of the volume of these stereo speakers. Now I can take my finger and place it anywhere within the progress bar to fast forward.
Whenever you have a song that happens to not have any album art, it basically displays a CD with a music note as a default. Now, the one thing that I do love about having widgets for the music player is that I can control the music from the home screen, like so. I've paused it. And then I can also fast forward to the next song. And as you can see, the album art has popped up for this one particular track. Now to access the music library from the front screen, all you have to do is tap on the album. But it does not have a visualizer function like on the E75 or the N95. Um, there is no visualizer special effects to where it shows graphics going across the screen as the music is playing. N97 does have considerable power whenever playing back music from the stereo speakers. Sounds pretty good. Not as great as the N95, but it's still pretty good all the same. You have the choice of a number of different inputting options. You of course have the QWERTY keypad. Of the handwriting mode. Where your gestures basically dictate what happens on the screen. It basically recognizes the character that I write onto the line and registers it up in the uh, message field. To input numbers, you basically click on the numerical button and anything that you input will be a number. You have this command that allows you to switch back from the handwriting to the T9 mode or you have your typical symbols command that brings up the punctuation marks that you can select. And then above that, you have your numerical mode, your alpha mode. And then right here, this happens to be a block that allows you to move the handwriting field and wherever you have your options command that brings up different settings for the handwriting. So you have your confirmation key that takes you out of the handwriting mode and back to the message. The alphanumerical keypad for T9. And there you go. Now I really do like surfing the web on the N97 in comparison to the E71, especially since it has such a bigger surface area for the screen. To activate the side controls, basically click on the lower right hand corner arrow. You can select this button to activate any one of these commands, or you can click on the central button to go to a specific website. We're going to go ahead and click on a YouTube site that happens to be in my history. And this is also a good opportunity to show you guys the flash support that is available on the N97 with a YouTube video. Now, using only the network connection through AT&T, it does take a while for the flash video to appear, but once it does, it works fairly well with a little bit of skipping every now and then. Five inch AMOLED screen, five megapixel camera, DLAX and XVID support, and the set of features characteristic of high end devices. Now, while the YouTube video is being played, you can also control volume with the rocker keys at the back here. All about Symbian. Now, the one thing that I did notice about this N97 web browser is that kinetic scrolling works fairly well for the most part. Is that when you do a double tap, it zooms into the text 
But unfortunately, double tapping into a paragraph does not make it optimized to where all of the words fit on the screen itself. You basically have to do a little bit of horizontal scrolling, which is not what I would expect from a so-called flagship phone. And this is my entire library of photos that happen to be on the device. It takes a while for the photos to refresh as you go to each section, but it's not bad at all. In order to select a photo, you have to double tap it. Tapping on it just once only highlights the photo. The great thing about this is that it not only prevents you from selecting a wrong photo, it also allows you to do a multi-select. To do a multi-select, you press on this check mark here, and it allows you to select multiple photos in one session. And with these multiple photos, I can then choose to send them, share them on O, we double tap, and it brings it up in full screen view. Once again, the accelerometer comes in handy when switching the orientation of the photo. To go from photo to photo, you can swipe with your finger or your stylus, and it basically works in the same manner as the iPhone or the iPod Touch. Now when you access a photo, there are a number of different commands that come off to the side of the screen. You have a back command to go back to the library, a send function, a delete function, as well as a share function to put it online. And then under, underneath, you have the options menu that brings up other commands that are available. Now, to the left of the photo, you have its designated placement in the library of photos, as well as zoom commands that can be operated with your fingertip or with a stylus. Now the responsiveness of the touch screen, I wouldn't say that I was wowed by it in comparison to the iPhone having a capacitive touch screen, but for a resistive touch screen with the plastic surface, it is very reliable indeed. With the slideshow, you can control the volume of the background music with the volume rocker keys here. In addition to controlling the volume with the rocker keys, you can also use the D-pad to move the pictures forward or backwards. Okay, 